Rob, what is our second main topic? John, today? our second main topic comes to us from Kylo Kent. Hi, Campy Crew. I just read via the New York Times that James Wan and Jason Blum are in advanced talks to merge their two production companies into one massive horror film factory. They feel as though they perfectly complement each other's strengths. Wan, the creative mind with Blum's mind for business. Blum wants to grow Blumhouse Productions exponentially, putting out eight horror films theatrically a year. Wan has a lot of ideas, more than he can handle by himself. I'm a big fan of most Blumhouse releases. I feel like this could be an amazing thing for these two creators. What do you guys think? Is Blumhouse going to become a horror film juggernaut in Hollywood? Thanks, guys, for all you do. And as always, bring on the filthy. 2022 might end up marking the year that horror took a big step up in prominence. Not necessarily the best horror ever made, but in prominence. What just what did we just talk about this week? Walter Hamada has been brought on by Paramount to kind of oversee their horror stuff. Now they've fallen short of giving them his own studio, like Marvel has their own studio, like Paramount Dark. But <laughs> that's but still, actually a cool name. That, yeah, that, that would kind of work. Then, but then Universe tried to do their dark universe. Yeah, but can or whatever. you imagine the Paramount logo like doing something instead of the 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 uh, the stars? It'd be like bats over the mountain, oh, and you'd oh. see like a castle <laughs> up there, and and thunder and lightning and the moon over and the just, Paramount instead logo. Instead of the sunlight, it's just a moonlight behind it. Or I mean, because like Silver Pictures had, you know, uh, their their uh, their own thing, Dark so, Castle Entertainment. Between that and now this word that maybe two of the hottest names in horror right now, James Wan, Jason Blum, combining their forces to make one uber kind of horror studio. This comes to us from the folks over at Deadline who write the following. If the merger goes through, Atomic Monster will benefit from the first look deal with Universal Pictures that Blumhouse is currently under. Now, Atomic Monsters, that's James Gunn's or James Wan's production company. They're talking about merging that in with Blumhouse. Uh, it's currently under having come to the conclusion of its own deal with Warner Brothers over the summer. It's expected that the companies would continue to operate as separate labels eat with each maintaining its own creative autonomy and brand identity. The alliance is expected to increase the company's combined output with Atomic Monster being able to utilize Blumhouse's existing infrastructure to scale its activities across film, TV, and new content areas, including games, live experiences, and audio. So for Atomic Monster, this is the question that comes into my mind for this. For Atomic Monster, you're like, okay, we have a limited bandwidth. There's only so much we can do. Blumhouse has this great existing first look deal with Universal Pictures. So we would benefit that way. Blumhouse has spent years developing this great infrastructure to get movies made and all that kind of stuff. They've got, they've got the system in place that they can take a movie from concept and get it on screen. There's a lot of advantages here for Atomic Monster. I'm not 100% sure what Blumhouse gets out of this. Because right now, I mean, if they continue to act as their own independent labels and they continue to get to make movies autonomously... I, I see what Atomic Monster is getting out of it. I'm not 100% sure I see what Blumhouse is getting out of it. How do you look at this deal? Well, I, I think they're getting James Wan. And if you look at James but are Wan. Are they getting James Wan? Well, they're getting, I, but maybe, look, he's done the Saw franchise, the Insidious franchise, the Conjuring franchise. Yep, monstrous. Monstrous franchises. He probably, you could probably, an arg argument could be made that James Wan is responsible Maybe for the most successful horror st oh, string of horror. Oh, there's no uh, argument. That's absolutely The thing true. that I find re really interesting is, where have we seen this before? The business guy and the director. Uh, something's happening over at Warner Brothers, I understand. And and Peter Safran, who is his, uh, James Wan's longtime producing partner, we talked about how Atomic, just now, Atomic Monster lost its deal at Warner Brothers, their housekeeping deal. It's interesting to me that Peter Safran, the producer of the entire Conjuring universe, and his producer on Aquaman and Aquaman The Lost Kingdom takes over Warner Brothers and and there's no way to keep James Wan there. Like, I don't know what happened there. I find it really interesting that that maybe David Zaslav said, look, we're getting rid of all these housekeeping deals. And so James Wan's like, okay, well, if you're not going to make a commitment to me, like I've done, look at how much money I've made for the studio. He talks to his buddy, Jason Blum. He's got Universal. And Jason Blum's got Blumhouse is really interesting because they not only make they make a bunch of movies, 
that don't go theatrical, that show up on TV and streaming services. And they've kind of got this, we'll make movies for five million bucks. And if they're really good, like The Visit, Shyamalan, Shamhammer comes back, they put it out theatrically. But if it's not, they have many different avenues through Universal to put them on various streaming services to make money. So I see as horror specifically as an incubator, I think this is an incredibly interesting, innovative partnership where James Wan, because, you know, he wanted to make The Trench, that horror yeah, spinoff based on and, Aquaman. And I'm sure that, that Warner Brothers like, no. Well, Jason Blum would be like, why not? I mean, we can't do it because it's Warner Brothers. Yes. But you know what I mean? He can come up. Now he can take the trench and be like, let's make movie, let's make a movie about monsters at sea. I'll make that. And Jason Blum's like, great, I'll do it over here. Let's let's uh, hire whoever you want. You know, I'll get my buddy Lee Wanell to come in. He's already making movies for me. And that's another thing. Remember, Lee Wanell made Invisible Man for Blumhouse. So I'm yeah. sure I'm sure that they're all hanging out together. And Jason Blum's like, why don't you come over to Universal, buddy? You know, Lee Wanell, they started the Saw franchise together. Now I've got the people that created Saw underneath one roof. Here's the interesting thing, too. I don't think that James Wan left Warner Brothers. Like, I don't think James Wan and Warner Brothers divorced. I don't either. I think this opportunity to merge companies with Blumhouse is probably it. And here's where it gets really interesting. There's actually nothing stopping a future James Wan atomic monster movie from going to Warner Brothers. Remember, the deal that Blumhouse has with Universal is a first look deal. Right. And Universal's not going to be in the position to to take everything that Blumhouse and Atomic Monster are collectively going to be putting out. That means there's going to be a number of projects that James Wan and Jason Blum come up with that are going to be shopped to other studios. Yeah, so there, there's there's your answer then. I didn't even think about this, but you just, there's your answer. So now they, Blum, Jason Blum has a backdoor entry into Warner Brothers. Yep. So you go to Saffron. So now they've got two studios bankrolling their projects. So they don't, they're sitting high on the hog because Warner Brothers is not going to want to give up their relationship. And I'll remember James James Wan made Fast Fast and Furious 7 for Universal. So you've got these two guys that have deep roots at both studios, and now they've got access to the money from both studios. So you look at it. Now you have, for Blumhouse, you're getting increased output, and you're raising your quality level overall with James Wan inspired and created projects. If you're a Tonk Monster and James Wan, you've got now the ability to put more of your ideas and put more of your projects actually into the production pipeline. And you come and you inherit this universal first look deal as well. So, I mean, this this could be a pretty major thing. And you think James Wan is a huge horror fan, doesn't want to crack at a universal monster? Oh, of course he does. I mean, I could see <laughs> I, James Wan. I don't, by the way, I don't know anything about this. James Wan's Creature from the Black Lagoon. I could totally see them. Been trying, they've been trying to make that movie. He could. T they take those ideas for the trench, put it into that, and then I, and then Jason Blum saying, "Okay, James, great, and I'm going to show you how to do it for fifteen million dollars." That's the thing, well, right? But he doesn't have to because James Wan made the Insidious movies. After that, he goes back and makes Insidious one for a million bucks. Yes, that's that's the point. Like they're going to be able to create these projects. They're going to be able to create them for budget. That means they're going to be able to make more of these things. It, it's it could like i said it could be very it's very very smart very smart guys question is for you what do you think about this the possibilities of the merger of jason blum and blumhouse talk monster and james wan coming together to make a something more powerful combining to make a horror voltron what do you guys think about this a horror <laughs> voltron whatever you think <laughs> jump down into the comment section below and leave your thoughts there. The holidays are officially upon us and it's time to start celebrating. Do your thing and holiday your way with Me Undies because it's the most wonderful time of the year to try Me Undies because they're currently offering a very merry deal. Get 20% off your first purchase with free standard shipping and free returns when you go to MeUndies.com slash Campia. Guys, you know I've been wearing Me Undies for a while now because I used to be like everybody else. I would go to the big store, buy the biggest box of the most generic underwear and I thought that was good enough. But ever since I started MeUndies and started wearing the most comfortable underwear I have ever worn in my life, I swear on this Christmas season, I will never go back. So get your holiday shopping finished early and start making time for yourself with the new MeUndies Holiday Collection. Their undies, long underwear, and sleepwear are made out of the softest, most supple fabric you've ever felt and are guaranteed to bring you comfort and joy to all of your loved ones. Shop their classic plaid prints for a traditional, picture-perfect style or get festive with their adventurous limited-edition sweater prints. 
boots. Available in sizes extra small all the way through 4XL, MeUndies has what you need to make all of your favorite people smile this holiday season all in one convenient place. So to get 20% off your first order, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash Campia.